Welcome to part three of the Power Break Project. In this video, we're gonna explore how the weight of a cue affects its ability to propel that cue ball forward at a fast speed. A lot of manufacturers recommend that their cue's been optimized for 18 ounces. And they say that because it's a little bit lighter, you can actually generate more speed with the cue, right? But then you have these heavy cues on the market too, 25, even a 27 ounce cue, which I think by most metrics is not supposed to be used by the 25 ounce limit. So should you go towards the other end where it's like, okay, you have this sledgehammer of a hit. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. I'm gonna run tests on three different sets of cues and we're gonna see which weights are the best. So my first weight test had to do with two different cues because that's the cues I had at the time. I had my 25 ounce action cue. Now this one here is actually 24 and a half ounces. They say 25. This is my elite cue. It's approximately 20 ounces as is, but you can actually take the weight bowl out of this cue to get this cue down to 15 and a half ounces. They say you can't customize it, but actually the weight bowl in here is just really, really a tight turn. I have a huge Allen wrench that you put in and it just takes a lot of work but you can get the weight bolt out and you can try that super light cue sometimes they advertise that too like a 15 ounce braking cue like oh you can get it moving so fast because it's so light so i tested this cue as is with 20 ounces right and i shot 10 different brakes and i recorded the speed then i took out the weight bolt and i shot another 10 brakes using the same exact sort of method and then I broke with this 10 times using the same exact method. So hopefully I would have three very different weights to compare their miles per hour. So you can see the lighter weight Elite Q still broke fairly well, close to 16 and a half miles an hour, but it never broke 17 miles an hour, not even once in 10 tries. And the 20 ounce Elite Q, it broke 17 a couple times and it never really dipped too far below 16. Only one time was it slightly below 16. But the Action Brake Q at the heaviest weight, that broke 18 once, almost twice, and almost always was at least 17 miles an hour or more. Only a couple times was a little bit below 17. So clearly in this test, the heavier cue was the more powerful brake stick with the same exact motion. However, these are different sticks. So I wanted to check out this experiment with another stick customizing to many different weights. Enter the Puchauer Naked Black Ice Cue. I think this is absolutely one of the most beautiful brake cues I've ever seen. The, the forward weighted shaft infused with whatever chemicals they talk about, it's really neat because it's forward weighted, which makes this a better balance cue than a lot of brake cues, especially when they're heavier because usually you get that butt heavy and it just feels so weird, but this cue still feels balanced even when you have weight in the back. But what I was able to do was take out all the weight bolts and I was able to test this cue in five different weights ranging from 18 to 24 ounces in approximately one and a half ounce increments. So I did my same test on all five weight levels. And you can see that there's a little bit of sort of non-conclusive data here because it sort of jumps around a little. It's not this linear progression, but most of them are around 16 miles per hour. In fact, that 18 ounce one was right at 16. And that's the level, though the weight, of course, that a lot of manufacturers recommend. But then you notice one number off to the side, right? You got 16.81. When I went up to 24 ounces, it was significantly almost a mile per hour better, right? For that weight category. So I was excited to see that this cue at 24 ounces made a difference for my stroke. But the downside was to do that, I actually had to hang the weight bolt out of the back. So I actually have sent this butt back into Puchauer and they repiloted the hole for me and I can fit more weight bolts in here. And this cue is now up to 24 with the cap on. Thank you, Puchauer. That was great. So at this point in my research, I am fairly convinced that a heavier weight cue gives me an advantage in the speed I can hit the cue ball with for my break shot. Now I can't guarantee that for everyone. That sort of fit my body type. I'm sort of like a taller guy, but I'm pretty thin. I can't generate that super force that some of these bigger guys can do. But it gives me an advantage in the same test I was shooting faster with a heavier brake cue. So I wanted to take this one step further though because some of the data seemed a little inconsistent. Did it hold true for one more cue? Enter my friend Mark's BK Rush Carbon Fiber Brake Jump Cue. Now since my friend Mark had the cartridge kit, I was able to 
test this also at different weights. I started at the 22 ounces he had in it, which is pretty much the biggest you can load this thing. So I shot this because I was serious. I really wanted some good data. I shot 15 times in this round. Then I took out all the weight cartridges, which brought me down to 17 and a half, and I shot another 15 break shots. Then I loaded this thing back up and I took off the cap and I tried to get, I actually hung out weight bolts, it was probably out to here. I hung weight bolts out as far as it would go and still be snug. I got it up to 24 and a half ounces because that's really what I'm targeting here. Can the heavy, heavy cue make a difference? And I gave that another 15 rounds. Now in this one, I was really trying to let the equipment speak for itself. So I ruled out the bottom half of the trials because I, I just assume these are some user error. I wanna know what is the top end of what's possible with these cues. So this is the average of the top seven and you can see that that light cue was significantly slower in the miles per hour, even in its best shots. I never even broke 16 miles an hour with it at that weight. Going up to 22 was significantly different, and then going up to 24 and a half got me my best power, which is continuing to convince me that a heavy brake cue is the best option, at least for my stroke. So in three different tests, it's been pretty consistent. The lighter brake cues did not generate as much force as the heavy brake cues. Every single test, that 24 ounce cue had the highest miles per hour for my stroke and my body type. I don't know if that's gonna be the same for you, but the idea that the optimized weight is 18 ounces isn't showing true for my test results. One final comment, it would seem that now you could use the three different tests to compare these cues to each other, but that's not the case. I have done a lot of brake cue tests over many different days, and I find that each day is slightly different in my braking speed. So check out my next video where I actually put these cues and more head to head in order to figure out what is the best brake cue and the components that go into them.